Welcome back to Art by Panema. Today we're going to be painting a sky using a flat wash. So let's get started. Just before we do that, we're just going to quickly go through the materials. I've got my paint palette here. Uh, what I've also got is a deep palette today. This is um, a ceramic uh, palette, but I think it's for eggs. And it's, it works quite well because it's quite deep, so we need to mix quite a lot of watercolour today in order to get the sky um, completed from top to bottom. Uh, I'm using a cold pressed paper and I've already taped it onto a board. I'm also propped up slightly, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off by mixing the paint. So I'm going to use my pipette just to show you how much water that we're going to need today. What we need to make sure is that we have enough paint to get us from the top right to the bottom. When you're doing a flat wash, what we can't do is run out of paint. If you do, the paint will dry out and you'll have streaky marks. So I've got plenty of water there now. So with my mixing brush, I'm going to take some cerulean blue. I'm just going to get some and I'm going to mix it into my palette. So can you see we have quite a watery mix, but make sure you put enough pigment in so that you get some lovely colour coming through. Okay, that's lovely. So that's ready to go now. The other thing I'm using today is a mop brush. What we need is a brush that holds quite a lot of water. You could also use a flat brush if you have one. It doesn't really matter which one, but we'll try a, a mop out today. This one I'm using is a number four. So I need to make sure that I can dunk my brush right into the water. I don't just want to tip it on and make sure I've got plenty of water on the brush. Make sure it's enough where there's a drip. What we also need to do is just make sure you've got a piece of tissue to hand, just in case you're getting drips. So let's go. So we're going to start off at the top. I'm going to hold the brush at a point and then I'm going to go across. Now, what I want you to do, notice is when I'm going across, I've got plenty of paint on my brush and also we've got a lovely bead that we're going to be pulling through. So put the brush in again. This time I'm just going to touch the base of the bead and pull that across. Okay, need to make sure that we go up to the masking tape, so even slightly out of the area, so that we don't have a white line along the side. So make sure you've always got the bead and just touch the brush on the edge of the bead. Make sure that you hold it upright as well. And the gravity will help the paint pull down as well. This is why we've propped it up. What you don't want to do is go back to any area that you've missed out because you'll start to leave some streaks. So when I get to the base here, I'm just going to take off all the excess paint off my brush and then I'm just going to go in with a, a slightly damp brush and I'm just going to sweep it across just to let the rest of the paint run down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the edge just so it, it runs down to the bottom. I'm just going to hold the paper up slightly higher just to let the little droplets run down. Okay, lovely. So that's the start of our flat wash. So notice what we've done is we started at the top and we worked from left to right and we took it all the way across. What I'm now going to do is just take a piece of tissue and just wipe off the edge. What you don't want is any puddles of paint anywhere. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the base, which is where our water is, and with the same brush I'm going to just dunk it back in the paint, and then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the paint off, and this time I'm just going to hold it on its side, and I'm just very gently going to skim, skim the paper with the side of my brush. I'm going to just miss the boats, just dodge the boats if you can. If you go over it's not going to be a problem because we're going to paint them in quite dark. And what I'm doing is I'm painting some water but I want it to glisten a little bit. I don't want it to be solid. So just put a little bit through there so that's looking nice. And then that's, that's the start of our water. Okay so what we did there is we pulled it through, held the brush on the side and just skimmed it up and down. And then we might need to put a little bit more on later, which we can do. 
but this is going to be a lovely starting point. So now what we need to do is we need to let the whole thing dry and then we can go in and start painting the boats. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the sky is nearly dry now, uh, but I'm not really going to be putting any more on. What we're looking for is a lovely smooth wash, as we explained earlier on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the boats. So you can paint the boats in whichever colour you like. So I'm going to do mine, I think, in an indigo. So I'm going to put some of that in my pot. And I'm also going to put a little bit of black in as well. So it's going to be quite a dark colour. I don't need as much mixture for this because it's only a small area. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to change to my number six round brush just because it's a little bit more finer and it'll let me do the fine detail. And then I'm going to load the brush up and in the same way as we did the sky, I'm just going to paint this in a flat wash. So I'm going to make sure that I've got a lovely bead that I've got to pull all the way from one end to the other. And I'm not running out of paint. to do the same for the other one so start off at one end make sure the brush is fully loaded and then we're just pulling that bead all the way across make sure you take it into all the little edges I've got plenty of paint on here that I can just pull through and I've probably just got enough to take me to the end of the boat what I don't want to do is dry out at any stage. Just get into the end now, just dabbing it on the tissue and just tidying it up. Okay, lovely. So that's the two boats done. We just need to let that dry a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint a little bit of reflection on the base of the boat. So for, in order for us to do that, I'm going to take my pointy brush again, my number four round. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the mop brush, make sure that it's clean. And I just want to dampen the water a little bit underneath here so that I end up with a soft line. Same thing here. I'm just going to dampen it a little bit and then I'm going to go in with the darker colour. I'm going to start to put some reflections in. So I'm going to just touch the bottom of the boat and then I'm just going to do some lovely little lines just all the way across. Okay, same here. We'd already wet it. Make sure you've got paint on your brush. And what this does is because we've already wet the paper, we're going to get a lovely soft soft painted look so once that's dry we can go back in and put a little bit more in if we need to so that's coming on quite nicely you can see the reflections we just need to let this um the boat dry a bit because i don't want to touch it while i'm going to go to the top of it so wait a couple of minutes okay so the boats are dry now i'm just going to paint the inside of the boat and this is a little, going to be a little bit darker. I've just added a little bit more intense indigo just to make that area dark. Same thing here. I want it darker than the outside of the boat. So that's the inside done. What I'm going to do now is just going to go back to the outside. I'm just going to put a little bit more of a wash on there. It's just dried a little bit light. So go back in with our mixture. 
and this time we're going to go halfway then we're going to rinse the brush out take the excess water off and then we're just going to pull the paint across to the end so this will give us a lovely shadow as well and it will give you a lovely graded wash so you can see it's quite light here and it's quite dark there okay so when that dries you'll start to see a slight gradation in the paint so what i can do now the reflections dry so i can go back and just on the dry paper this time just add a few more long lines just to show where the reflections are, are coming through okay same on this one here i'm doing some hit and miss lines and as the water comes closer to me the reflection gets a little bit smaller it's going to go in with the intense color and just right at the base just put a little bit more dark because just where it reflects, it's usually quite dark and it's in shadow. Okay, lovely. So that's coming on nicely. What I want to do is just go back and just blend this in a little bit more. Okay, so that will settle nicely now. What we're going to do in the distance is we're going to put a couple of mountains in. So we're just going to get our big round mop brush again. We're going to go in with the indigo. And before we do that, what we'll do is we'll just put a piece of masking tape across this shoreline so that we don't uh, go into the water. Okay, so I've just placed some masking tape across the shoreline. I'm going to go in with my mop brush and then I'm just going to go in to the edge and I'm just going to put some little peaks to represent some mountains. I'm working on quite a watery mix. I haven't pre-drawn these, so just go up and down. And that will give us a little bit more depth to the picture. So we need to just let that dry off. Keep the tape on for a little while yet yeah, until it's dry. Okay, the mountains are dry now. We can remove the tape. So just gently peel it back. And that's come on quite nicely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just do a little reflection from the mountain. So get the mop brush or the flat one or whichever one you're using and just wet, wet the base. Don't wet the mountains. And then what we're going to do is with the slightly darker colour that we did the mountains with, we're just going to very gently just sweep that across. Same thing, just need to let it dry a little bit. In the meantime, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit more water on. So I'm just going to get the mop brush, hold it back on its side, go back to the original blue colour that we had. And again, just very gently, just skim over. This is also referred to as dry brushing. And what's happening is the paper's just catching parts of my paint and it's just skimming over the paper, giving me lovely lovely ripples it looks like it's got some light coming through okay don't want to go too mad just a few bits here and there let that settle again okay so that's now dry what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the sail poles on I'm using a watercolor pencil this time because it might be a little bit easier just draw the lines in So once I put the lines in, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to go over the line with the water so it'll just blend in a little bit more.
Okay, so that's probably nearly finished. The only thing I might just do is just put make a slightly darker shadow line. Remember, I can only do this once it's dry. So it'll just take a little bit of time to dry out. And I think that's going to be a finished project. So what I can do is I can remove the tape to show you what it looks like. Okay, and there's a picture of our beautiful water scene today. So just to recap, we started off with a flat wash to do the sky. Then we used the side of the brush to do the ripples in the water. Uh, we painted the boats and then we put some more masking tape across and we put the mountains in. So this is a really lovely one to do, especially if you're a beginner. Just to say thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me paint today and I hope it inspires you for you to have a go as well. Uh, don't forget to like this video and also to subscribe to the channel. I'll be back soon with another video. So bye for now.